go to number 42 in your hymno. 42, saved by the blood of the crucified one. Number 42, let's all stand together as we sing. Glory, I'm saved. On that first together. Saved by the blood of the crucified one. Now ransomed from sin and a new work begun. Sing praise to the Father. singing tonight. Aren't you glad you're saved? And uh, glad I'm saved and on my way to heaven. And uh, glad I'm in church on Sunday night. And uh, glad you are too. It'd be awful lonely if you weren't here. And uh, looking forward to what the Lord has for us tonight. And uh, let's pray together, shall we? Father, we do thank you for the wonderful privilege that's ours to sing we're saved. And Lord, we realize we're saved by the blood of the crucified one. We're saved because of what Jesus has done for us not anything we can do for ourselves. And Lord, we rejoice. We thank you for so great salvation that you provided for us. Thank you for each one that's made their way to church this evening. And Lord, we're praying that you will meet with us, speak to our hearts, give us what we need on this Sunday evening, January the 8th, 2017. May you control the service and make it exactly what you would want it to be. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. All right, you may be seated. All right, let's go over to 333 together. 333, three, three. I have found a friend in Jesus. He's everything to me, the lily of the valley. On that first, I have found a friend in Jesus. He's everything to me. He's the fairest of 10,000 to my soul, the lily of the valley. Make me fully whole. In sorrow he's my comfort. He tells me every hair on him to roll. Hallelujah, he's a lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. He all my griefs have taken and all my sorrows borne. In temptation he's my strong and mighty star. I have all for him forsaken and all for titles torn from my heart and now he keeps me by his power. Though all the world forsake me, hallelujah, he's a lily of the valley, the bright and morning star, he's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. He will never, never leave me, nor yet forsake me here. While I live by faith and do his blessed will. A wall of fire about me, I'm nothing now to fear. With his manna he my hungry soul so 
Great singing this evening. Now a few announcements for us, if you listen carefully. Um, remember, back on our schedule this week now, Wednesday night for the midweek service. And uh, Wednesday night, we, we talked last Wednesday night about be not conformed. And I'm gonna, we're going to look this Wednesday night about be conformed. All right? There is uh, something we ought to be conformed to. And we'll look at that this Wednesday evening for our study. And then uh, remember... Uh, next Sunday, the Sharpettas will be here in the morning service. Uh, Brother and Mrs. Sharpetta and their children, they're heading to Puerto Rico, February 27. And uh, they're just hitting some of the churches that are close by them and uh, getting a chance to, to see the churches that have uh, supported them. And uh, we get an opportunity sort of to give them a send-off, and uh, we'll have a special prayer of dedication for them Sunday morning, and it'll be a great service together. So I hope you'll plan to be here uh, Sunday for the Sharpettas. And then uh, don't forget men's breakfast coming up on January the 21st. That's uh, on a Saturday morning. There's a sign-up sheet for that downstairs, fellows. If you get signed up for that, we appreciate you uh, doing that. All right. Um, we talked this morning about the opportunity to get some, oh, what they call Odia Bibles to the people of India. Uh, Brother Yoder is heading there on February 8th with uh, Doug Fowler from uh, Fellowship Baptist Church up in Canton. And uh, they'll be there for two weeks, uh, meeting with pastors and a pastor's conference and such. And the pastor hosting them there had re uh, requested they might be able to get some Bibles. And uh, Brother Moreland has done the work and uh, with the India Bible Society, and we have some uh, prices and such. And so uh, we have some uh, both quarter folders and dollar folders. And uh, I think we've used all the quarter folders. I think they're out, and that's great. We already had a couple come back in tonight. How's that? And uh, somebody got right on it, amen, raided the coin jar, amen, and uh, got them filled out. And uh, I do have one here if somebody wants that. But uh, if you didn't get one this morning and you want one or if you want a second one, we've ordered more quarter folders, by the way. These, uh, when you fill up the quarter folder, it's $10. When you <coughs> fill up the dollar one, it's $40, okay? <coughs> we have an opportunity to get 500 Bibles for these folks. And as I said this morning, it covers... That language in India covers about 34 million people and 192 different people groups because uh, they're able to read that language and uh, have a Bible. Uh, again, I, I just can't imagine what it would be like to try to go to church, try to live for God, and not have a Bible. Uh, it would be very, very difficult. And uh, so we, we have a great opportunity here to help some folks. And so uh, we're going to do it. We'll be collecting them February 5th. <clears throat> on I Love My Bible Sunday, okay? So uh, that'll be appropriate. So you have a month to get these in, and you can bring them in any time. We're going to, I think what we're going to do is get a box made up with a uh, slit in the top there, and we'll put it up here on the platform. So when you come to church and you have these filled out, just put them in the box, and we'll just collect them at the end of every service. We'll uh, empty that box out uh, so that that way, because they're kind of big to get in the offering, you know? And um, that'll, uh, that'll work good, okay? Anybody need one tonight? Got one up here. You want this quarter one, Shara? Come right on up. Ready, young lady? Very good. All right. Brother Brett, you need one down here? Okay. Give him the dollar one. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it on, brother. Bring it on. All right. There we go. Great. All right. The ushers have more of those, I think. Is that right? They're in the offering plates in the cabinet there. So if you need one, just ask them for one, and they'll get that out for you, I'm sure. And uh, appreciate you doing that. That'll be an exciting, exciting time seeing that come in. All right. Let's take a minute. Let's welcome any guests we have with us tonight. And uh, if you're here tonight for the very first time, not a member of Bible Baptist, we'd love to meet you, find out who you are and where you're from. Anybody here tonight for the very first time? Just put your hand up in the air. Any first timers? No? Got one right over here? Okay, that's right. Both of you guys. Who... Tell, tell us who you are and where you're from. Wow. Is that right? Don, welcome, welcome back. Okay. Okay. 
Well, welcome back home. That's great. Good. Okay. All right. Oh, do you work Kirk Williams? Good. Okay. And who is this? Don and Don. Okay. All right. Say that again. Oh, okay. All right. Well, it's good to have you this evening, man. Appreciate you coming. Good to have both you Dons here. All right. That's great. How about that? And uh, the usher will hand you a card to fill out there. If you'd be kind enough to just take a moment and fill the card out, we appreciate you doing that. In a little bit, we'll have the offering, and you just drop that card in the plate if you would, and keep the pen as our gift to you for coming. We're glad you're here this evening. Let's give the gentlemen a warm welcome, shall we? And forty-three, four zero. Would you turn with me, please? Verily, verily, oh, what a Savior that He died for me from condemnation. He hath made me free. Three, four, zero. On that first together. Oh, what a Savior that He died for me from condemnation. He hath made me free. He that believeth on the Son, saith He hath everlasting life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, verily, verily, message ever new, he that believeth on the Son, tis true, hath everlasting life. On that third, though poor and needy, I can trust my Lord. Though weak and sinful, I believe his word. Oh, glad message every of God hath everlasting life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, message ever new. Yet 
it I will not doubt for him that cometh I will not he that believeth oh the good news shout hath everlasting life verily verily I say unto you verily verily message ever new he that believeth on the truth is true hath everlasting life amen that's great well let's go over to 539 together Five through five three nine. All that thrills my soul is Jesus. Let's stand together, if you would. Let's stand together. Five three nine. On that first, who can cheer the heart like Jesus? By His presence, all divine, true and tender, pure and precious. Oh, how blessed to call him mine. Oh, that thrills my soul is Jesus. He is more than life to me. And the fairest of 10,000. Love I see. Love of Christ so freely given. Grace of God beyond degree, mercy higher than the heaven, deeper than the deepest sea, oh, that thrills my soul is Jesus. And the fairest of ten thousand in my blessed Lord. Ladies, sing that third together. What? And greet one another. Make somebody feel welcome, especially our guests. We'll sing that last together.
Oh, that thrills my soul is Jesus. He is more than life to me. And the fairest of 10,000 in my blessed Lord I see. On that last, let's sing it all together by the crystal flowing river. With the ransomed I will sing on that last all together. By the crystal flowing river, with the ransomed I will sing. And forever and forever, praise and glorify the King. Oh, that thrills my soul is Jesus. He The fairest of ten thousand in my blessed Lord I see. said amen be seated great singing tonight i don't know about you that sounds better than a stadium of a hundred thousand cheering a touchdown that's better than that i'm telling you praise the lord it's great all right for the poll able glad you could make it and uh good <laughs> He got to sing and he forgot he was taking the offering, I guess, huh? <laughs> Amen. All right, we'll pray and we'll ask God's blessing on the offering tonight, and I'm going to have you pray for us, all right? Amen. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you've given us where we can come and worship you and, and hear words preached from the word of God, and we pray that you be with the pastor, that you'd hear him, have him just give us the message we need. And then we pray that you'd be blessed with this offering that you give us, us. You give us plenty, and we just give back what that portion that you want for, from us to you. And we pray that you'd bless it now, and we pray that you'd uh, be with the remainder in the service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Take your Bibles this evening, if you would, for our scripture reading to Isaiah chapter 22, please. Isaiah chapter 22. Isaiah 22. We're going to read two verses together tonight, verses 22 and 23. 
of Isaiah chapter 22. And we'll just read these two verses in unison. As our custom is, let's stand together to read the scripture and all of us standing please to read God's word. And let's read verse 22 and 23 of Isaiah 22 together. Ready? And the key of the house of David will I lay upon his shoulder. So he shall open and none shall shut and he shall shut and none shall open. And I will fasten him as a nail in a sure place and he shall be for a glorious throne to his father's house. Now, Father, we ask you to add your blessing to the reading of these verses here this evening. And Lord, as once again we open up your word, and we look into the only book you've ever written, that you would minister to us tonight through your word, that, Father, as we speak the word of God, that the Holy Spirit would minister that word to each one of our hearts. Lord, I pray that, Uh, each one of us would yield ourselves tonight and ask the Holy Spirit to speak to us and give us what we need from your word this evening. So control these next few minutes, Lord. Help us to be focused. Help us to listen carefully to the still, small voice of thy Spirit speaking to our hearts. And may your will be done in these next few moments we spend together. It's in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. All right, you may be seated. Isaiah here is speaking about a prophecy, uh, and he's prophesying about the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus is the one who's going to be the nail fastened in a sure place. And I'm sure glad that Jesus uh, is a nail fastened in a sure place. And by the way, he, he's, one of the nails fastened in a sure place for Jesus was the nails of salvation. Uh, he died on the cross for us. He, God commended His love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Neither is there salvation in any other. There's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Uh, it's only through the name of Jesus Christ. And it's by grace we're saved through faith, that not of ourselves, it is the gift of God. I'm glad that Jesus gives us a nail Uh, that is sure in providing salvation. But Jesus, I think, also is a nail uh, that is sure concerning His Word. The Bible says all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. I don't believe part of the Bible. I don't believe most of the Bible. I believe all of the Bible. Uh, I believe every word has come from the mouth of God. I believe we have an every word Bible. And I believe we can trust every word of the Bible. And, and we have a nail fastened in a sure place. The Bible says forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. And uh, the word of God is eternal. Eternal means it doesn't just never end. Eternal means it's as, it's, it has no beginning. God's word is eternal as God is. And so it's a sure, uh, Peter called it a sure word of prophecy. Uh, I thank God that the Word of God, the written Word, is the same as the living Word. It is a nail fastened in a sure place. You know, it's amazing. The Bible, 66 books written by, I think, 40 different authors and living in different places and uh, over a period, by the way, of 1,600 years. And and they all pen the Bible and there's there's not any contradiction. There's no errors. There's, there, there's nothing in it uh, that, that would uh, read one place and you say, well, no, it doesn't mean that over here. And who could do that but God? Nobody but God. How I'm thankful for the Bible. I'm thankful for how sure and how settled it is and, and, and how certain it can be. It truly can be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. It's a nail fastened in a sure place. But I'm also thankful for the nail that Jesus gives us of his return. Jesus is coming again. It's the blessed hope of the believer. And we're looking for him to come. I don't know. I, listen, I don't, I, I don't, nobody, by the way, nobody knows when he's coming. Uh, we've had several people try to set the date, you know. And, uh, and I'm, always, I'm, it's all, I'm always amused by that uh, because you're not going to know the day or the hour. I got a message this morning on Messenger from Brother Callahan uh, over in Japan. Uh, it probably was... I'm thinking 7 a.m. or so, our time. And uh, you understand, 
they were already in Sunday night. Their, their Sunday was over. They already had Sunday morning, Sunday night. In fact, right now, it's already Monday. So if you said, oh, Jesus is coming back on Sunday. He's coming back Sunday night at 7.30. Oh, is that Eastern time? What, what do the people do over in Japan when it's already Monday? They, do you understand what the Lord meant when He said, no man can know the day or the hour? Because you don't know what time. If God's on any time, He'd probably be on Jerusalem time. But He's sure not going to be on American time, okay? Uh, we Americans, we kind of think that way because we're so stinking proud. We think everything revolves around us. But God doesn't revolve around us, okay? And He's got His time. But He is coming. And I don't know if He'll come in 2017 or not, but I know not, there's nothing preventing Him from coming in 2017. Except Ann Moreland asked him to wait till she could get to the mission field. I think that's probably it. But yeah, she's saying, yeah, that was me. All right. But he is coming again. Amen. And, and we're excited about that. So he was, listen, Christ is the nail fastened in a sure place. He is our surety. And he's before the throne of God tonight interceding for you and for me. He prays for you and for me. You ever, you, you ever get great comfort by somebody telling you, I'm praying for you? Has that ever happened to you? And you say, boy, I appreciate that. And sometimes when you've been ill or you're sick, you, you feel those prayers. And, and I got news for you tonight. Someone's praying for you. And I can confidently say that someone is Jesus Christ. He's interceding for you at the right hand of God. What a blessing. What a joy that is. He's a nail fastened in a sure place. Now, I want to give an application to this that is not about Christ, but it's about you and me. Listen carefully. A nail is not always very big, but a nail is pretty important. There are thousands of nails in this building. Okay? They're rather important. In fact, a single nail can be important. Let me go up on the roof and, and pull a nail out of a single shingle and just let it be loose. And allow the water to get underneath and to come into the building. And, and see literally the thousands of dollars worth of damage that can do as the water comes in and makes its destructive path in the building. Thousands of dollars in repair. Why? Because one little nail came loose. One little nail quit doing its job. Did you know God never asked us to be big teachers? Our big preachers, our big missionaries, our big anything. God never asked us to do that. He just asked us that we could be a nail fastened in a sure place. Could you just be a nail fastened in a sure place? Each of us finding a place in God's work. It doesn't matter if it's a big place. It doesn't matter if it's a small place. Because every place is an important place in God's work. And so be a nail fastened in a sure place. It takes all the nails to hold the building together. It takes all the nails to hold the work of God together. It takes an usher to seat people. It takes a nursery worker to watch the babies. It takes bus workers to bring people on a bus. It takes Sunday school teachers to teach the boys and girls. It takes junior church workers to bring the lesson. It takes choir members to sing the song. It takes a pianist and organist to play the instruments. I'm sorry, and a flutist to play the flute. It takes a sound man to run the mics and run the live stream. Got a, got a wonderful email from somebody. Uh, th th just uh, checked the email before I came to church tonight. And somebody in Virginia, uh, probably because of the snow, I'm wondering, and, and, and I think they're caring for a, a loved one at home. And some in Virginia, no idea said, picked up your service this morning on live stream, and what a blessing it was. And, and, and so it took the time to send an email to us and let us know. It takes someone to, to do that. It takes church cleaners to clean the building and clean the restrooms. You see, all that is everybody has a place. Everybody has a job. Everybody has something they can do. You could just call us nails. Uh, this fellow coming from years ago, Brother Don, used to come to the church. I... Uh, who was? Where are the Wallaces? Over here. I think, I think I remember you telling me there was a family in the church years ago with the last name of Nail. Isn't that right? And, and, they, had, and they named their son Rusty. 
Who would do that to a kid? You know what I mean? And was their daughter Penny? Or was that just Penny Nail? You don't think so? That would have been kind of funny too, wouldn't it? And uh, they uh, just so they didn't name his guy Bent or something, you know. And, uh, but I tell you, that, uh, be, a, be a nail fastened in a sure place. You could just call us nails. Now let me give you three simple thoughts. I won't keep you long tonight. Just three thoughts I want you to, to remember. Number one, be nailed where God wants you to be. Be nailed where God wants you to be. You know, a, a tent peg called a nail can keep the tent in place. It's interesting, when the children of Israel got to the promised land, uh, God told them uh, to, to, to drive down their stakes. And meaning put down their tent pegs there. You know why? That's where they belonged. That's where they were to stay. That was uh, God's will for them. That's, what, uh, that's, what, that's where their place was. Now, do you think if God had a place for Israel, you think God might have a place for you? You think if God had a plan for Israel, do you think God has a plan for you? Don't think that, don't look at the Bible and say, yeah, that's great for those guys, but boy, God sure is confused with me. No, God's not confused with you. God has a plan for you, and God has a place for you. There's a place for you to serve. There's a place for you to live. There's a place for you to, to, to serve Him in church. There's a place for you to have a job. I'm telling you that the happiest place for any Christian to be is in the will of God. That's where you want to live. That's where you want to be, is, is doing the will of God. Just nail down the will of God for your life and say, you know what, this is what God has for me, this is what I'm doing, and I'm going to be happy in the service of the King. This is my life. This is what God has given to me. Nate, hey, listen, nobody, nobody, no, nobody's life is just as they thought it would be. Don't, don't think that, you know, I, I, I told you before in the, in the paper back home where I grew up, they, they always had the 18-year-olds, and, and they would have the athlete of the week in high school. And the back, usually the back page of the sports section, they'd have it divided in half, and it would be a boy athlete and a girl athlete, and they'd highlight what they did and what kind of sport they played. But they always ask them at the end, where do you see yourself in 10 years? 18 to 28. And I often wondered, boy, it'd be great, wouldn't it, to go look these people up at 28 and then show them that, that, that paper and say, How, how's this working out for you? Huh? I, would, I would venture to say, not anybody hit it on the head. Is your life exactly as you thought it'd be when you were 18? Huh? Yeah, you're laughing, aren't you? Yeah. And that's what somebody said. You want to make God laugh? Tell him your plans. Yeah, you know, that's, a, that's, that's pretty close, isn't it? No, 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 no. God has a will. And God has a place for your life. God has something for you to do. And God has a place he wants you to be. And I'll testify to you. I, I, I can testify to you the happiness of doing the will of God. The happiness of being in the will of God. Hey, go down to the bar tonight. Go ahead. Go to the tavern. And ask the people there, who's going to stand up and, and say, well, I just want to tell you how, how wonderful it's been these last 20 years, what alcohol's done for me. I want to testify how great my life's been because I've been down at the bar every weekend. You don't have them. You don't have people like that. When the prodigal son was away from home, when he left home, and, and he went out and, and lived it up for a while. For a while, things were pretty good. Because he had money. He, had, he was living the good life. He had the, what the Bible says, the pleasures of sin for a season, didn't he? But guess what? Money ran out. And when the money ran out, the Bible says no one gave to him. All those, I'm sure he thought, but I have, I have, I have 200 friends on Facebook. Where are all my friends? If you're relying on your Facebook friends, you don't have friends. Okay? Don't do that. And no man gave to him, and he ended up working for a pig farmer. And as he sat looking at the slop the pigs were eating, thinking this, this, these corn husks and everything, they look pretty good. You know what he thought about? He thought about his father. He said, those servants have it better than I do. And he said, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to get up and go back to my father. I'm going to go back to my father. And I'm going to return home to him. And he went back to the place of blessing. 
the place of blessing. See, there's a, there's a place of blessing for you. There's a place that God wants you to be. And what you do is you, why don't, listen, why don't you let God nail you where he wants you to be? So people tonight, you're, you're, you're fighting against God, you're holding back against God because you know where he wants you to be and you're fighting against it. Don't fight against that. Let God nail you where he wants you to be. Let me give you thought number two. Be the kind of nail that God wants you to be. Be the kind of nail that God wants you to be. Nails, by their very nature, they're not supposed to be seen. Every now and then, uh, you'll, you'll look along a wall and you'll see a, a nail there. And I, I understand, I'm not a carpenter by any means, uh, but they call that, I think, a nail pop, don't they? It pops out. And because and, nails usually are not to be seen. They do their work unseen. There's, there's nails all throughout this platform. Now, you can't see them, but I'm glad they're there. Okay? Or else you wouldn't see me. All right? And uh, so I'm thankful that they're under there and they're doing their job. And so be where God wants me to be? Absolutely. But listen, I don't just want to be where He wants me to be. I want to be what He wants me to be. I want to be what God wants me to be. There's many unseen nails that hold the work of God together. There's many unseen nails that hold the church of God together. Unseen nails that provide the flowers for anniversaries. Unseen nails that mow the churchyard. Unseen nails that empties the trash out of the building. Unseen nails that clean the building between services. Unseen nails that bring the, the bread and the sweets from Kroger's and put it in the fellowship hall. Unseen nails that drive a church bus on Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday night and bring folks to service. Unseen nails that change a church sign every week. Unseen nails that keep the baptistry ready for folks to obey the Lord and be baptized. Unseen nails that count and deposit the weekly offering. Unseen nails that care for the baptismal robes and the towels and see to it they're clean. Unseen nails that take care of the missionary apartment and make sure it's ready for the missionary when they come. Unseen nails that put labels on tracks so we can pass out the gospel and it has the church name on it. You see, all of those are unseen people that hold the work of God together. See, oftentimes people come and, and, and they, give, they give credit to the pastor. The pastor isn't what makes the church. It's the unseen nails that make the church. It's the unseen nails that do the work of God. The unseen nails hold things together. Thank God for, for, I thank God for nails he's put in place at Bible Baptist Church. Wasn't, wasn't always that way. When I first, you know, when you first came here to the church, man, I, uh, you know, we, we, did, we did most everything. I painted, I've painted everything in the basement at least once. Have I done, uh, used to have to write the letters and sign the letters and type the letters and do, do all of the secretary work. And then God brought a secretary and said, let, let the secretary do that. Hallelujah. And uh, they're, they're, they're just amazing. The nails that God has brought together, I thank God. Hey, are you being the nail God wants you to be? Are you being the nail God wants you to be? Are you nailed where God wants you to be? Number three give you point number three be a usable nail be a usable nail how many have how many of your garage you you have things hanging on the wall in your garage you got that okay how many now i know they make fancy hooks for these things and all this stuff and but how many of you just put a nail in the wall and hang stuff on nails anybody do that yeah that's what i do you know i nails nails are they, they do just good a job in fact i got my snow shovel hanging up there with a nail I hope it stays there all winter, amen? And, uh, and that's okay. They can have all that rain and uh, all that snow down south and take it up north. Just, just let us go right through the middle. That's okay. I'll be all right with that. But there are some things, you know, God has, there's all different kinds of nails. And, and 
There, and and I, I don't know, I don't know all the proper names for all the nails, but I know, I know this. I know there's long ones and there's short ones and there's skinny ones and there's fat ones and there's, there's all sorts of stuff and you understand the correlation. And uh, there's, there's all kinds of people. And here's the, here's the here, listen, here's, here's the purpose. Because there's some nails that can do some things that other nails can't do. And so, listen, there's some things that you can't do, but someone else will be able to do. There's some things that they're not going to be able to do, but you're going to be able to do. And so, you don't have to ever become jealous of another nail. All right? Just do the job that God made you to do. And so, there's some things that I can do that you won't do. There's some things I won't be able to do that you'll be able to do. And so, we understand that. Now, I'm talking to somebody tonight. Maybe you've become a rusty nail. Maybe, maybe through idleness. Maybe you've been set aside by sin. And, and you've been laid aside. And as you've been laid aside and, 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 and not been used and not been doing anything, you've become rusty. And you think, well, I'm just an old rusty nail now. No one, I, I, I guess I'm no good for anything. Oh, i got news for you. Uh, if you confess your sin, He's faithful and just to forgive you your sin and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. You know what God does? God can take uh, his, his forgiveness and His cleansing and He can cleanse that rust right off of you. And He can make you a nail that He'll use again. Oh, my friend, God, God loves to, to use nails over again. Time after time in the Bible, you find people who, who God used after uh, they had become tainted by sin, after they had messed up, so to speak, as we would say. Listen, God can, God can help you. And that leads me to this next one. You may be a bent nail. So what's that mean? It means that at some point, God was trying to hammer you in a sure place. You ever hammered a nail in, and then it started to bend? Hmm? You, you know what? You better not just keep hammering. Okay? You might as well stop. You're not going to get her straightened out that way. But let me ask you this. How many of you ever taken a nail that was bent, laid it down on like the concrete, and tapped that thing and made it out straight again? You ever done that? Sure. Did you know God does that too? Do you know God is in, God, God loves to straighten out bent nails and use them again. God delights to do that. And God did, has, did that over and over in the Scripture. You know, when Peter cursed and swore and denied he even knew the Lord, I'm sure he felt like a pretty bent nail. In fact, I know in John 21, when he says, I'm going to go fishing again, that, that is, I'm just continually going to go fishing. I'm going back to what I know how to do. I flunked discipleship 101. And, and in fact, even when the women came back from the tomb and the angels were specific when they told the women, go tell the disciples and Peter that I'm risen from the dead. And, and I think he had to say that because I think if he had just said, go tell the disciples, Peter probably would have thought he doesn't mean me. I don't consider myself a disciple anymore. Not after what I've done. I'm too crooked to be used. I'm too bent up. Uh, no one will ever be able to use me to fasten anything. And God, God in John chapter 21, when Jesus met him on the shores there of Galilee that day when they were fishing, you know what Jesus was doing? Straightening them out. Straightening them out so he could use them. Oh, and just, just a few days after that, he preached Pentecost and 3,000 came to know the Lord as a Savior. God straightens out crooked nails and uses them again. Aren't you glad he does? You say, oh, preacher, you don't know what's happened in my life. You don't know what's I mean, I'm all bent up. No, no, no. Just say, God, would you straighten me out? God, would you use me again? Would you? I'll do, I'll do anything. I'll do something. Just, just let me be a nail that can be used by you, that I can have a purpose, and I can hold something together. And he'll use you. He'll help you. And there might be some people here tonight would say, well, wait a minute, Pastor, I'm an old nail. I'm an old nail, or I'm just a, I'm just, what, what can I do? What am I able to do anymore? Did you know that some nails require, or some jobs require a very small nail? Some jobs, that's exactly what, it, what you need and exactly what it calls for. In fact, 
I think shingle nails are not very big. Am I right? Just short. But they're pretty important. They do a pretty important job. What I'm saying is, God uses every one of us. And God uses every one of us for different purposes and for different reasons. But every job is important. Every nail is important. And it doesn't matter what what has happened to you or what's going on in your life. God can clean you up. God can straighten you out. Whether you're big or little or small, God will use you if you desire to be a nail fastened in a sure place. A nail fastened in a sure place. Be what God desires you to be. I don't know about you. That's what I want to be. I just want to be a nail fastened in a sure place. That's all I desire. Just, just God, use me. In fact, I, I, for me, I just want to be a nail fastened in this place. This is, this is the place. Um, I, I don't know how much longer. I, I, I plan to be here till Jesus comes. Okay? Now, for some, that's good news. For others, that's, oh, man. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint you. But I plan to be here till Jesus comes. I just want to be a nail fastened in a sure place. Doing God's will for my life. Doing what God wants me to do. Doing where He wants me to do it. Doing what He wants me to do. And I just want to be a usable nail. Will you be a nail? Will you be a usable nail? Will you be a nail that will do what God wants you to do? Will you allow God to fasten you where He wants you to be? Hmm? You have to yield to Him. Let's, be, let's, let's ask God to help us to be nails fastened in a sure place. And if you've never realized what Jesus Christ has done for you when He was nailed to the cross and purchased your salvation, why don't you trust Him as your Savior this evening? You see, the Bible says God commended His love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The songwriter put it this way. The songwriter said, I should have been crucified. I should have suffered and died. I should have hung on the cross in disgrace. But Jesus, God's Son, took my place. And he took your place. He died for us. He paid our sin debt. But he didn't stay dead. Three days later, God raised him from the dead. And God was saying, I'm accepting my son's payment for the sin of mankind. And God says that's what each of us must do. That we must, by faith, accept Jesus Christ and his payment for our sin as our hope for heaven. And he'll give us the gift of eternal life. And we shall be saved. My friend, you can be as sure as heaven, as sure as you're sitting in the room tonight if you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone as your Savior. If you don't, there, there is no salvation in any other. That includes yourself. There's no other way to be saved except through Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. And then once you receive Him as your Savior, you begin to live your life for Him. Just say, God... Just nail me where you want me to be. Let me do what you want me to do. And let me be a usable nail in your work. And God will use us that way. Let's pray together, shall we? Father, take the truth now this evening. Thank you, Lord, for everyone's attention tonight. Not a, not a profound message, but just a message that I believe you put on my heart to, to try to encourage folks and help folks, and in some cases, challenge some people. We all can be nails. We just have to say, God has the master carpenter. Nail me where you want me to be. Let me do what you want me to do. Keep me usable. I pray tonight for those who might feel like they're rusty. Will they come and let you cleanse them? Take the rust away. And watch you use them again. Maybe some tonight feel bent. They've resisted you in the past and didn't do what you wanted them to do. Lord, you can straighten them out. You can make those crooked places straight. 
and you can use them once again. Others may feel pretty insignificant. They can't do all they used to do, but they can still be a mighty important nail. And Lord, I pray that you would help them and bless them tonight. Thank you for all the important, thank you for all the nails that are unseen that make the work of God go at Bible Baptist Church. I thank you so much for the faithful folks, unseen, who simply do what you've called them to do. And Lord, our prayer is just that we could keep doing it and be faithful till we see you face to face. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. I'll finish praying in just a moment. But I wonder how many here tonight would say, Pastor, you know, you talked about Jesus being the nail fastened in a sure place. How Christ was nailed to the cross for our sins. He died for us. And Pastor, there's a time in my life when I realized that I was a sinner and that Jesus died for me was buried and rose again, and that if I called on Jesus and asked Him to be my Savior, He'd give me the gift of eternal life and take me to heaven. And Pastor, there's a time I did. I I trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior. And I know that if I died tonight, I'd go to heaven. Not because of anything I've done, but because of what Jesus has done for me. And Pastor, here's my hand as a testimony. I know that I'm saved tonight. Would you slip your hand up and say, Pastor, here's my hand. I know that I'm saved. All right, you may put it down. You here tonight would say, Pastor, I don't know for sure. If I died, I'd go to heaven. I, I don't know for sure that I have eternal life. Would you let me pray for you? Will not embarrass you, will not call you out, but I'll pray for you. That God would open your heart and you would receive Christ. Would you say, Pastor, that's me. Pray for me tonight. Would you put your hand up and just slip it back down? Would you anybody like that tonight? You couldn't raise it the first time, but you'll raise it this time. Would you do it and say, Pastor, just remember me in prayer. All right. I wonder how many believers tonight would say, Pastor, I want to be a nail fastened in a sure place. I just want to, I want God to, to, to place me where He wants me to be, doing what He wants me to do, and I'm going to ask Him to just keep me usable. I just want to be a usable nail till He calls me home to glory or He comes back for us. Preacher, God spoke to my heart tonight. Pray for me this evening. Will you slip your hand up, Christian? Oh, that's good. Praise the Lord. Wonderful. Thank you. You may put them down. In a moment, I'll pray, and we'll have our invitation. God has spoken to your heart. Respond to him tonight. Do what he's bidding you to do in your heart. Heavenly Father, thank you for speaking to us this evening. Lord, we sure do love you. We thank you for loving us. I thank you so much, Lord, for dying for us, for giving your life for us, and I pray we'll give our lives a living sacrifice for you. And you'd help us tonight to be nails fastened in a sure place. And it's a sure place because it's the place you choose. Doing what you want us to do. Keep us usable, Lord, for your glory and for your honor. Now have your way in every heart and life during this invitation time. And I'll thank you for it. With your heads bowed, please stand to your feet. As you stand to your feet, our pianist will play. She plays the invitation hymn, God has spoken to your heart tonight. You respond to him, will you please? That's right.
Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Father, I thank you so much for a wonderful day today. And Lord, I want to thank you for the many nails that are fastened in a sure place at Bible Baptist Church. Lord, I thank you so much for those who for 60 two years have been fastened in a sure place at Bible Baptist Church and those who faithfully stayed in their place and did their job. Thank you for these who for years, many here for years, have served you faithfully. And Lord, I pray that you'll keep us all faithful until you come for us. Allow us to be faithful unto death, but faithful until you return. And Lord, remind us that we're just nails fastened in a sure place. We love you. Thank you for a wonderful Lord's Day together. Pray you'll dismiss us now with your care. Make us mindful, Lord, that you go with us. I pray, God, that you would increase and we would decrease. Use us to do your work this week and to point others to Jesus. It's in his precious name that we pray. Amen. Amen. It's a grand thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. Let's sing it together, shall we? Let me hear you sing. It's a grand thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. It's a grand thing to follow Jesus. Anywhere and everywhere I go for it's a grand thing to be a soldier in his army here below. It's the grandest thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. God bless you. You are dismissed.